if I didn't feel like there wasn't, you know, the potential for it to grow into something really special, then it, it wouldn't have made sense, but it makes a lot of sense to me. You think you're a front row team this week and everything. Obviously, you won the Daytona 500 with them. Um, was there anything that made you want to to leave to go to a different team or anything with that team in particular? Um, you know, I mean, I think that nothing. there's nothing that made me want to leave. I mean, we're not leaving on bad terms. They're just weren't in a position to to make a commitment to the future and so I feel like you know I have an opportunity to do that and I want to do that I want to drive for a lot of years in the sport and I think that that's maybe something that uh, folks are not uh, catching with this is like it, it wasn't like front row came to me and said hey here's a three-year deal we want to keep you so I didn't turn something down. Um, I went and found an opportunity where I could drive for a lot of years. What are you looking uh, forward to with Carson and uh, Corey over there? Well, I mean, you got Carson, who obviously is the future of the team. I mean, he's got a tremendous amount of talent. I think everybody can see that he's done an awesome job. Um, so hopefully I'll be able to help him. Um, you know, I don't think I'll help him with speed on the racetrack, but I think I could help him with all the other things that go around making a race team successful. Um, but he's got a bright future, and, and Corey's always overachieved. He's always had to learn to be scrappy and, and do more with less. Um, but now that that program's building, there's that transition that happens, and, and I've gone through that transition at Front Row where you're just trying to make it week to week into now you're trying to actually contend. So, um, yeah, hopefully a little bit of experience and a little bit of knowledge and um, you know, anytime that you can bring strength in any organization, you know, from people, it's a it's a good point. You know, to and we'll be able to do that as they expand that three cars there. Um, obviously, they're running Zane, but it's a tricky deal with with Trackhouse and Inspire, and, and some of those employees being Trackhouse and some being Inspire and all those things. So, just having that continuity in the shop and be able to add depth to the shop will be important. With how involved you feel with front row, will you play a role at all in finding your replacement in the 34? No, I don't think so. Um, I mean, if they would ask, if they asked me, I would, I would, uh, you know, give my opinion. But I don't think, um, I don't think I'll be in that conversation. But you never know. Who would you want to take that seat after you? If you, if you, if you could uh, give your opinion on who would. Oh that? yeah, it's tough. I mean, it, it's all about what direction you want to go, right? And who's available. And no different than the truck decision that they had last year with with the uh, 38 truck you know do you put a young guy in with a lot of upside and develop him to a championship contender or do you plop somebody in like a Brett Moffat that can go win the championship today and you know he can win races and so I think it'll be just them determining which direction they want to go and for the future of the team I mean obviously you already have Todd who's um, more seasoned now I wouldn't call him a rookie right and so he's got good experience and he'll be able to to carry the team well so I'm not really sure what what I would give advice wise but you know with all the charters and moving and shaking and all that there's still a lot of unknowns of who will be available and there might be there might be some top guides that are available so I think that you know they'll they'll make the best decision